Hello, my name is Pete Gerlach. I've been a professional family systems therapist for 32 years and my intention with these videos is to pass on to you um, some of the key things that I've learned in interacting with well over a thousand men and women um, just like you. This video focuses on an essential for satisfying relationships. Uh, the essential is called empathy. Stop and think. Uh, can you define what empathy is? Do you know what it feels like? Do you know people who aren't able to empathize? Do you know anybody like that? Often they are labeled by society as being cold, self-centered, insensitive, and so on. Can you define um, to the difference between empathy and sympathy? Those often overlap and they can be confusing to try and clarify and distinguish. For me, being able to sympathize with somebody is understanding intellectually what they may feel or think or need, but not being able to feel what they feel because I have not experienced what they have, what they are experiencing. The uh, obvious example is we men, no matter how sensitive or how thoughtful or how attentive, cannot really empathize with you women who gestate a baby for nine months and then deliver. We don't know what that's like. We can read about it, we can listen, we can talk, but we don't know, we can't empathize. In some respects, women can't empathize with certain, with being male. There are millions of examples, but the point is, a real essential for satisfying relationships is each person being able to empathize. I just recently read a very interesting, useful article on where does empathy come from published in 1910 by Time Magazine. The theme of this article was empathy, the roots of empathy may be instinctual in all persons and in order to develop empathy, young kids need to have empathic adults guiding them. What does that mean? It means young kids need to observe, hear, and be around males and females, adults, who talk openly about their feelings, identify their feelings by name, talk about what these feelings feel like, what is fear like, what is guilt like, what is shame like, what is confusion, how about overwhelm, how about resentment, how about hatred, how about love? Kids need to observe and experience adults who are free to talk about those feelings in the context of an everyday life. The kids need to be taught the language of feelings and they need to be encouraged through patient, kind, non-critical questioning. So how did it feel to have Pat take your truck away? How did that feel? How do you think Pat felt? Kids need coaching, questioning, and teaching over a period of years when they're very young to bring out, to bloom the seed of empathy that is within them. Many kids who are parented by psychologically damaged and wounded parents do not get that coaching and that modeling. And as a result, they are handicapped psychologically. They grow into adults <coughs> in a society that depends on relationships and values mutual understanding, sensitivity, and love, they grow up being unable to feel, empathize, and perhaps unable to bond with other people, sometimes other living things. Society labels, wrongly in my opinion, labels such unfortunate people as sociopaths or psychopaths, or being egotistical or narcissistic. The, those are symptoms of a fundamental wound that occurred in their early childhood 
they were not encouraged, but patiently and skillfully taught how to empathize. In case that happened to you or someone you care about, including one of your own children, the question that arises is, so if that happens, can you develop empathy later in life intentionally? After 32 years of being a therapist, my considered opinion is absolutely. Yes, you can develop a high degree of empathy if you put your mind to it. There are several requisites. The first is that you're guided by your true self. That's the subject of several other videos and the subject of lesson one in my free self-improvement web course at sfhelp.org. Put your true self in charge, become aware of empathy and lack of empathy, commit to deciding I am going to improve my empathy within my limits, intentionally learn to feel your feelings and name them during average days and average nights. Just say, what am I feeling right now? Well, I'm feeling frustrated. Okay, what does that feel like? Why am I frustrated? What can I do about it? Practice that with every emotion. All emotions are positive. They point at a need that needs filling. The illusion is some uh, emotions are negative. I disagree with that. I think all emotions have something to tell us. So learn to feel your feelings and identify them. Learn uh, a lexicon of descriptors. What does it mean to feel overwhelmed? What does it mean to feel confused? What does it mean to feel angry? enraged, anxious, numb. What, what do those feel like and how do you distinguish them from each other? As you become more familiar with your own feelings and what to call them, begin to notice when other people are feeling emotions, start to name the other people's emotions using your own database. If you practice that over some months intentionally, I propose you can become more empathic. If you do so, that will benefit every relationship you've got, including with yourself and any young people in your life and your primary partner and even ex-mate. So it's highly worth doing. So ask yourself, how empathic on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 is I'm not empathic at all, I have no clue what other people are feeling, 10 is I am extremely sensitive to and aware of what other people feel in all situations. 1 to 10. How empathic are you now? Could you benefit from improving your empathy? What would other people say of you who know you well? Oh, she or he is um, a little empathic, fairly empathic, very empathic. What other people say? How about your parents? Were they empathic? Were they able to give you this gift? If you are a parent, are you giving this gift to your kids? I hope this video has raised your awareness on this one important of many factors in building healthy, mutually satisfying relationships. Um, here are a couple of assets uh, if you want to gain further information. The first asset is study the videos and related web articles in Lesson 1. That will teach you about your personality, who's really running your life, and are you being guided by a true or false self. Lesson 1. There are three sets of Lesson 1 videos, and there is a self-improvement course on the web. It's free. No ads at all. Lesson 1. The second um, resource that I refer you to is an article that I recently uh, published as part of the website in Lesson 4. Lesson 4 is about improving your relationships. Here is the web link to that article. Um, it goes into some more detail than I have here and it also includes the original Time Magazine article that really spurred this video. 
So I invite you to read that article and learn more about this vital social skill of empathy. Okay? Notice how you feel right now. Pause and reflect. Why did you begin watching this video? Did you get what you were looking for? If you did, what do you want to do with it now? Thanks for watching.